Hi guys, in this video I'm gonna uh, talk about uh, the development of the diffuser or basically the underbody of the car after 1982, after banning ground effects. And I'm gonna start drawing a car um, which is uh, basically the side of the car. Uh, there we go. Now that's the side part. This is the rear tire. Drag that to the back. There you go. And here's the rear wing. Okay, great. These are the side pods. Um, and uh, what, what you have in the side pods, air goes into the side pod. In the side pods, you'd have like uh, your coolers, radiators, which cool, uh, you know, which, which cool the engine fluids, oil or water. And um, below the side pods, you had something like skirts. And the whole side pod, that is in the ground effect days, was the underbody of the side pod was shaped like a wing. I'm gonna just draw a dotted line. So basically, when you, if you look beneath the car, it would go, it would go like that. It would have a dotted line and it go up, 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 up and exit here. Let me, let me, let me just put in another color. Uh, let me take group red. So the blue air is the air going into the side pod to cool, uh, to cool the uh, engine fluids and the air producing downforce would go below the side pod and un follow that wing profile and exit at the back and that would, would produce this massive ground effect or downforce that I discussed in, in previous videos. Now uh, after 1982 uh, this, this wing profile was abolished and, and obviously those skirts, those skirts, those blue skirts, what they did, uh, they, are, they stopped the leakage because down here you had a, a, an area of very low pressure and around the car very high pressure and what you don't want, you don't want that high pressure to leak into the low pressure so you had those skirts uh, basically some sort of plastic like material uh, which were uh, um, attached to the bottom of the side pod to avoid this leakage and obviously those skirts and that wing profile was banned from 83 onwards so that underbody uh, and the side pods w took a different shape and basically uh, I'm just gonna give me some more space what happened is uh, I'm just gonna change colors again let me take blue again the new shape was uh, I've got some space so we can compare them if we see the old one yeah uh, I'm just gonna do the side pod again that's now the new side pod And basically in 83, nothing changed in the side pod except at the back. It didn't go straight, but it developed this sort of Coke bottle shape, which is basically, it tapered off at the back. And there's a rear wheel. I'm just gonna do it small because I can show you the so basically what happened is if you see wait a minute let me do that better yeah that's much better it's this uh, in the ground effect days this was quite straight and now what happened that side part that area here was taken off and it tapered in what that what that what that uh, uh, produced was the following now air still went into the coolers to cool the radi to cool the engine fluids and stuff but the air around the car was going like this and was following now this under wing and remember after ground effects they were banned in the, or from 83 onwards the only wing profiles were allowed behind the wheel axis anything in front of the, the rear wheel axis uh, was supposed to be flat 
So the car had a flat bottom until the rear wheel axis, and then after the, uh, behind the rear wheel axis, a wing profile was allowed, and that was that was the diffuser. So what happened? The air, uh, this coke bottle ensured that the air had was was uh, had less turbulence and uh, could effectively go, uh, you know, have a smoother flow over the uh, diffuser here. The rear wing. Let me just change colors again. The rear wing is still here, as previously, and through this through this uh, uh, coke bottle, the rear wing also received cleaner air because a lot of turbulences was removed by this taper, and and thus this this diffuser and the rear wing refi uh, received cleaner uh, air, meaning air with less turbulence. Now, if we look at the diffuser closely, the diffuser looks, from the front, it looks like that. From the side, it would look something like that. That's the wheel. There's the axis. And the diffuser would go like this. And obviously, anything in front of the axis is flat. So you had flat, 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 and then here you had this wing profile. And the air would go, let me draw that again, change color into red, so we have a nice. So you'd have that air going on top of the diffuser. This is this bit here, much cleaner, less turbulence due to that coke shape bottle. And then the air at the bottom going up and accelerating and thus producing this downforce which is pressing the rear end of the car down. From the back, if I'm going to draw the diffuser from the back, it would look something like, like that. I hope I can get it right. Uh, it'll be like that. And then you have this wing profile. Okay. Like something like that. Then you have here the rear wheel. Okay. And and that's that's the front of the car. That's the front of the car and we're looking at the back and air would basically exit out of here outwards okay so that's how a diffuser would would look so and, and the coke bottle shape was the first development in those post ground effect days another development in 83 and uh, Renault introduced that oh by the way um, this coke bottle shape was pioneered by uh, McLaren McLaren in 83 and um, one thing about that coke shaped bottle, in, 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 inside those side pods you had massive coolers for the engine, those radiators, and um, in the 80s you also had turbocharged engines, and those turbocharged engines had bigger coolers, and they had additional coolers called intercoolers, which were supposed to uh, cool that compressed air. Now that's why uh, in the 80s, mid 80s, let's say until 88, that uh, coke shaped bottle wasn't that pronounced. Later on, when turbos were banned from 89 onwards, that coke shaped bottle got more pronounced. It would look something like that, way inside. Because after turbos were banned, there was no need for those big coolers, and thus you had more space to sacrifice from the side pods. So that, that coke shaped bottle got more pronounced and thus you'd have a better uh, diffuser area or a better working diffuser area than in the turbocharged cars. You can see pictures of that. I mean, you compare pictures of, let's say, a Williams or a Lotus or a McLaren of, let's say, 85, 86, compare that to a McLaren or Williams of uh, 91 or 90. Now you'd see that coke bottle shape is way more pronounced than in the mid 80s. Okay, 
Now another development uh, in 83 regarding diffusers was, and let me draw the diffuser from the front. I'm just going to draw the diffuser now without a car. And the diffuser, looking at it from the front, it'll be like that. Basically, the diffuser was basically two parts because here you had the gearbox of the car. So, that, so you couldn't have one continuous diffuser going all through and that was the second bit. And I'm going to draw, this is one rear tire. Oops, I don't like that. There you go much better okay that's the rear tire and here's another rear tire i'm not going to draw that now because i want to clarify something what renault did and basically in the traditional diffuser you'd have air go through here and exit here and you have your downforce and what they did they said look if i accelerate this air here what would happen i would produce more downforce why because remember i explained in a previous video um, in a wing, this difference in speeds between the upper section of a wing section and the lower section is what cr produces this lift or this downforce. And the higher, the higher you speed at the bottom of that wing, the more downforce you produce. Thus, they decided why not have our exhaust, you know, the engine exhaust. Wait, let me just uh, have the engine exhaust. Uh, blow in here so you'd have the airflow stemming from the from the car speed plus the exhaust pipes blowing exhaust gases in here this these exhaust gases I mean they come pretty fast I mean they're like very very fast and thus accelerate all that flow beneath the uh, diffuser and thus create more downforce an excellent idea and they did produce more downforce it 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 had a side effect a negative side effect those those exhaust uh, gases only worked as long as the driver was uh, uh, on the you know pressing his leg uh, his foot on the on the throttle when he was lifting off let's say when he was doing a turn or so the exhaust pipes didn't have any more gases they weren't producing any more gases and thus that downforce was you know instantly away and that car cars felt very unstable in the in the 80s cars using this kind of uh, principle were very unstable in the 80s especially when drivers were lifting off and you suddenly lost that downforce so so you, you know you have to be very careful with that with that thing and um, uh, and this this thing developed until today i mean today what they're trying to do they're trying to have exhaust uh, gases go through that underwing even though that driver is lifting off. So you have to do here, use the engine management system, do some clever tricks, because the problem with this blown diffuser, as it is called, is that when the driver lifts off, you lose all those, all that downforce because you lose all these exhaust gases. Another thing what, uh, what Lotus did uh, three years later in 86, <coughs> they tried to produce ground effects with a flat bottom. And with the way they did it, I'm just going to draw the car here, a simple car from the side. There's a car. Okay. And there's our diffuser. Now, air rushes through the flat bottom and then goes up here and thus producing that downforce. Now, what Lotus tried was what, as we know, I, I explained in a previous video that <clears throat> if you can sort of get this gap here from the underwing or from the diffuser to the ground at a certain m m dimension, let's say like, I don't know, so and so many millimeters, you can produce a ground effect. Ground effect means that the car acts like a Venturi, meaning you not only produce downforce, but also acceleration, because in a Venturi, a Venturi works like that. You have something like that. If air goes in here, it's pretty slow here. 
but then at this it gets really tight in here and at this tight place air accelerates out of here and that's that's what they call a, this is what's a, called a venturi whenever you you uh, restrict the the area where air is supposed to flow air accelerates in that area and that's a venturi effect and 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 exactly that the uh, lotus was trying to do exactly that and the way they tried to do it was they did like that They lifted the front end of the car and lowered the rear end and thus you had here a very narrow area so air was coming in here you notice the car looks like the upper half of that Venturi section and air was coming in here getting really in this tight section accelerating and this acceleration speeded that air further along that diffuser thus creating more downforce than uh, had the car been, you know, like hard, you know, really horizontal uh, along the ground. Obviously, the drawing I did here is very exaggerated. I mean, that that lifted nose and dropped rear of the car wasn't visible to that to the eye. It was only a few a few millimeters and it wasn't absolutely not visible. I just draw it exaggerated here because you can see this looks like this. And the effect was the same here you had this massive acceleration thus producing more downforce along your diffuser and basically ground effects on a minuscule scale and the way they achieved that is through uh, they use something called active suspension which became all the rage in the 90s and i'm gonna have a video or a couple of videos on on that thing basically active suspension what horrible handwriting i've got Basically, active suspension uh, is basically uh, is the suspension system was controlled by a computer, deciding how stiff should the dampers be, how stiff should the springs be, how should the car roll, should it roll, should it pitch, etc. And uh, Lotus pioneered that active suspension thing in the 80s and used that to create this, uh, you know, uh, lift the car from the front end and lower it at the rear to produce this Venturi effect. And uh, diffusers really developed uh, through the 90s. They got, cut, I mean, a typical diffuser of the 90s was very intricate. It looked something like that. I mean, we're very, very intricate shape uh got to be seen on, on diffusers so there's the gearbox of the car and then the same shapes were at the other end of the car and so on and here were the wheels that was that's one rear tire so quite intricate shapes. Some were some were blown with uh, with exhaust. Some weren't. And uh, I think until to this day, um, uh, those diffusers are really as uh, you know black art or science in themselves. I mean, very complex aerodynamics.